welcome back. As promised, I am here to talk about the next movie. My name is Rusty. This is my channel where I talk about my favorite horror movies. Um, I call this series Scream With Me. And this episode is Scream With Me. Let Me In. This is the 2010 remake of the movie that I just did a video on. This is the 2010 remake of that movie, Let the Right One In. This is called Let Me In. Uh, this is the North American, Americanized version. Um, and it stars Cody Smith McPhee, Chloe Grace Moritz, of course, and Richard Jenkins. This was directed by Matt Reeves, and he fiddled with the screenplay just a little bit, what, they, what the original would allow him to. And I have a serious issue with Mr. Reeves. Um, one of my bucket lists would be to punch him right in the face. Not because of this movie, but what he did about the movie. The, uh, the promotion that they did at the release, you know. You know, like the interviews and stuff. <coughs> but, um, thankfully, the screenwriter... The, the guy who wrote the book and wrote the screenplay for the first movie would not allow him to pull his shit um, in the actual movie itself. So interestingly enough, this movie is almost shot for shot. The let me, you know, let the right one in, which is kind of interesting, but it is almost shot for shot. It's just Americanized in um, location and atmosphere. Um, but it's not uh, any different than the original movie uh, as far as the basic shots and the basic premises go. Which is, which can rehash, um, he allowed him to change the names instead of, instead of Ellie and Oscar. It's Anna and um, Owen. <coughs> so um, you basically have Owen is an uh, introverted intelligent, quiet, abused kid, um, not at home, but a, abused at school, he's being bullied, who uh, has a strange girl and her, what appears to be her father, move into their apartment complex, where they meet down in the quad and um, develop a relationship over the course of the movie. Um, she, of course, turns out to be a vampire being taken care of by this middle-aged guy that you think is her father, when actually he's not. Um, he's going out and getting blood for her. He eventually gets caught all this time. She is trying to help Owen um, stand up for himself and stand up to the bullies that, you know, have been attacking him. And the caretaker gets caught ends up dead, um, she feeds on him. All of those shots are the same, which is interesting. And um, she's going to have to leave because now she has no one to take care of her. And the uh, pool scene is still there. Uh, however, she doesn't leave any survivors in which she kills, you know, he thinks she's gone. But she comes back and rescues him and they leave together on a train goody goody gumdrops you know the only thing that was different between you know you can watch that with you know that discussion to get any of the more details but everything was beautiful and this movie is just as beautiful as the first one the only thing that they really changed was they cut out the reveal scene they changed the names and that's it but the the original screenwriter would not let this asshole matt reeves he would not let him incorporate any of the bullshit that he said after this movie was released into the movie itself. He was like, no, you can change their names. If you want to keep the, um, the bigoted, dumb, American, North American audience uh, in the dark about the underlying reveals of this story, that's fine. But you're not going to incorporate it into the movie itself. I'm not going to allow that. And I love him for that. So basically my problem with him is that 
when this movie was released and they were doing press for it, he came up with this fake backstory about Anna. Um, some uncle turning her into a vampire that she's really a girl and all of this stuff. None of this was incorporated into the movie. If you did not see or know that um, he did this promotional bullshit and this backstory, I think they even got someone to create a comic book, uh, a short, you know, few issues comic book to explain Anna's backstory. And in interviews, you know, because he was jumped on about it. And, and basically in interviews, and the original director and writer sort of distancing himself from it, saying, you know, I didn't let him change anything in the actual movie. Um, the knowledge of the truth of the book is still right there in the movie. She also in this movie tells him on many occasions that she is not a boy. Um, so everything's the same. But what, you know, really irritated me is that the director, and this was so, I as a movie lover, was really offended. I understand. I really do. You know, but the director basically said that the North American audiences are too bigoted and stupid to know the truth of the book, the truth of Let the Right One In, and that it was all about money, you know, because if people were to find out that this was actually the story of two boys, not a boy and a girl, that unlike the original, which uh, actually revealed that in the movie, it's not like people are so stupid they can't read the book, I mean, come on. Um, but, <laughs> you know, it, that's basically what he said. And I found that very insulting and offensive, although, unfortunately, it might be a little bit true that America, you know, that America might have made it a little more controversial. You know, to have this underlying castrated boy issue going on, and that's fine. I understand that, but is the answer to play into that and give in to it over money, or is the answer to say, be stupid, but we're not going to um, cut up or screw with a piece of art? Now, the writer of the book who wrote the screenplay for the original movie did not allow that, so don't think that this movie can't be watched because of it. It's not in the movie. The movie, nothing about this fictitious backstory that this asshole director came up with to say in interviews was the, you know, Anna's backstory that she's really a girl. It's not like the first movie or the book that it came from. Um, nobody bought that, nobody buys that to this day, and there is absolutely no mention anywhere in this movie of any of the bullshit that he said after this movie was released. There is nothing in this movie to indicate that backstory that he made up in the press and, pu and publicity of the movie afterwards. So. The original director was able to keep the integrity of the story and movie together. And to tell you the truth, in the interviews that I've seen and read with the original director and the, uh, the original screenwriter um, who wrote the book, he just thinks this Matt Reeves was funny, that this whole thing was funny. I didn't, you know, I didn't let him mess up my movie, my screenplay. The story is still intact. But he wanted to cut out the reveal scene and he wanted to make up some fake bullshit story about her backstory so that the American audiences wouldn't know that she was really a boy. Okay, you can do that, you know, but you can't put it in the movie. Uh, you can't put anything alluding to that into the movie. If that's what you want to tell people, you know, the, um, in press conferences about this movie or interviews or publications go right ahead but everybody can see the original and everybody can read the book so you're actually just not only insulting North American audiences but you're looking like a dick you're looking you know kind of like you know because of course they're going to accuse Matt Reeves this director 
they're going to accuse him of being homophobic or something and going, well, you wanted to change it. No, no, no. Oh, well, no, I didn't want to change it. It's just that we have to make money, and Americans are too stupid and bigoted to, you know, know that about this. Like they were too stupid to go rent the original or too stupid to read the book. Well, okay. You know, do it. If, it. if it makes you feel better to come up with some fake backstory so you don't have to deal with the issue, go ahead. I don't care. What I do love is that the original director, the writer of the book, and the writer of the original screenplay refused to allow him to put it in the movie itself. So this movie and the first movie can be watched together. Aside from that one reveal scene, there is nothing in this movie, really, that is not in this movie. And the stories are pretty much identical. They're kept the same. Um, so, yeah, you can watch Let Me In without knowing the publicity that he tried to pull off after this movie. And it's the exact same thing. So, no harm done to the movie. I didn't appreciate American audiences, even if it is true, a little bit. Um, I didn't appreciate American audiences basically being told by some asshole director. I didn't appreciate, you know, that. We look bad enough, I mean, come on, <laughs> in the world. I didn't really appreciate a director coming out and saying basically that North American audiences were too stupid and too bigoted and prejudiced to, to deal with the truth and it might make, not make as much money because it would be controversial if he put that reveal scene. So the original director is like, well, okay, you know, you can take that scene out because people might not get it. They might be stupid enough to think she means I'm a monster, not a girl. Okay, well, you know, I thought that too at the beginning until they actually showed it in the first movie, and then I read the book. So, I mean, that's cool, but you didn't have to come out and make up some lie, and you especially didn't have to say that North American audiences were too stupid to handle the truth, or too bigoted or prejudiced or lowbrow to handle the truth. Get real. So, anyway. Ah, that feels better. <laughs> oh, fuck you. Yeah. Um, but, yeah. The 2010 remake absolutely phenomenal wonderful movie just as the original um, do yourself a favor and get both of them um, the cinematography the gore the emotions involved everything is in this movie just like the first one and uh, the only reason that there really has been any slack about that is people going it didn't go far enough you know but I love this just as much as the first one, and I want to thank the ether and hope that the original director and writer fills it, and that is, thank you very much for not letting this asshole put any of your stupid post-production shit into this movie, because I like it just the way it is. Uh, the actual true backstory of Anna, or Ellie, is what makes this movie so good. Uh, if you've never read the book, I suggest reading the book, Let Me In. You can get a translated copy of it. Um, and yeah, I absolutely love this movie, and I will pick out the next movie to talk with, and I'll also maybe try to re-record that, that Rock With Me vi uh, video that I did for 30 minutes without no sound. That was really cool. Thank you. That was like, you know, when I played it back to look at it, and it was just like this buzz sound, I was like, really? Okay. That's, that's, that's nice. I appreciate that. I've given, my, I've given myself a sore throat for absolutely nothing. Okay. Uh, that, that's good. Whatever. But uh, thanks for tuning in. Um, let me in, 2010. Let the Right One In 2008. Both of them I absolutely adore having in my collection. They're two of the best vampire based movies I've ever seen in my life. And I absolutely love them. And I will see you in the next video as soon as I decide which.
which one I want to talk about next, I think. I really want to talk about the Last House on the Left remake. Um, I just watched it, and uh, that might be it. So, I will see you next time. Love you, bye.